Hey there, this is Miss History coming to you with another Women of History tidbit. This time we will be focusing on Marie Curie, also known as Madame Curie. If you like my content, let me know in the comments below. If you don't, tell me why, I guess. Leave a like or a dislike, that's up to you my friends. But big butts here. I would greatly appreciate it if you hit that sub button right there. Move over a little. Yep, there you go, right there. Maria Skodowska, later known as Marie Curie, was born on November 7th, 1867 in Warsaw, which is modern day Poland. Curie was the youngest of five children, following siblings, Zosia, Joseph, Brenya, and Hla. Both of Curie's parents were teachers. Her father, Vladislav, was a math and physics instructor. When she was only 10, Curie lost her mother, Bronislava, to tuberculosis. As a child, Curie took after her father. She had a bright and curious mind and excelled in school. From childhood, she was known for her astounding memory. And at the age of 16, she won a gold medal in the completion of her secondary education at the Russian Lycée. Her father lost his savings through a bad investment. So Marie had to take work as a teacher and at the same time took part clandestinely in the Nationalist Free University reading in Polish to women workers. At the age of 18, she took a post as governess where she suffered an unhappy love affair. Both Curie and her sister Brunia dreamed of going abroad to earn an official degree, but they lacked the financial resources to pay for more schooling. Undeterred, Curie worked out a deal with her sister Brunia. She would work to support Brunia while she was in school, and Brunia would return the favor after she completed her studies. In 1891, Marie went to Paris and began to follow the lectures of Paul Pell, Gabriel Lippmann, and Edmund Bauty at the Sorbonne. There she met physicists who were already well known, Jean Perrin, Charles Morin, and Aim Cotton. Marie worked far into the night in her student quarters garret and virtually lived on bread, butter, and tea. She came first in the license of physical sciences in 1893. She began to work in Lippmann's research laboratory and in 1894 was placed second in the license of mathematical sciences. It was in the spring of that year that she met Pierre Curie. Marie and Pierre got married on July 25, 1895. This marked the start of a partnership that was soon to achieve results of world significance. In particular, the discovery of polonium in the summer of 1898 and that of radium a few months later. Following Henry Becquerel's discovery in 1896 of a new phenomenon, which she later called radioactivity, Marie Curie, looking for a subject for a thesis, decided to find out if the property discovered in uranium was to be found in other matter. She discovered that this was true for therium at the same time as G.C. Schmidt did. Turning her attention to minerals, she found her interest drawn to pitchblende, a mineral whose activity, superior to that of pure uranium, could be explained only by the presence in the ore of small quantities of an unknown substance of very high activity. Pierre Curie then joined her in the work that she had undertaken to resolve this problem and that led to a discovery of new elements, polonium and radium. While Pierre Curie devoted himself chiefly to the physical study of the new radiations, Marie Curie struggled to obtain pure radium in the metallic state. Achieved with the help of the chemist, André Louis de Bjorn, one of Pierre Curie's pupils. On the results of this research, Marie Curie received her Doctorate of Science in June 1903 and, with Pierre, was awarded the Davy Medal of the Royal Society. Also in 1903, they shared with Becquerel the Nobel Prize for Physics for the discovery of radioactivity. The births of her two daughters, Irene and Eve, in 1897 and 1904, did not interrupt Marie's intensive scientific work. 
she was appointed lecturer in physics at the École Normale Supérieure for girls in Sevra and introduced there a method of teaching based on experimental demonstrations. In December 1904, she was appointed chief assistant in the laboratory directed by Pierre Curie. The sudden death of Pierre Curie, April 19, 1906, was a bitter blow to Marie Curie, but it was also a decisive turning point in her career. Henceforth, she was to devote all her energy to completing alone the scientific work that they had undertaken. On May 13, 1906, she was appointed to the professorship that had been left vacant after her husband's death. She was the first woman to teach in the Sorbonne. In 1908, she became the titular professor, and in 1910, her fundamental treatise on radioactivity was published. In 1911, she was awarded the Nobel Prize for Chemistry for the isolation of pure radium. In 1914, she saw the completion of the building of the laboratories of the Radium Institute at the University of Paris. Throughout World War I, Marie Curie, with the help of her daughter Irene, devoted herself to the development of the use of X-radiography. In 1918, the Radium Institute, the staff of which Irene had joined, began to operate in earnest and it was to become a universal center for nuclear physics and chemistry. Marie Curie, now at the highest point of her fame and from 1922 a member of the Academy of Medicine, devoted her researches to the study of the chemistry of radioactive substances and the medical applications of these substances. In 1921, accompanied by her two daughters, Marie Curie made a journey to the United States where the president, Warren G. Harding, presented her with a gram of radium bought as a result of the collection among American women. She gave lectures, especially in Belgium, Brazil, Spain, and Czechoslovakia. She was made a member of the International Commission on Intellectual Cooperation by the Council of the League of Nations. In addition, she had the satisfaction of seeing the development of the Curie Foundation in Paris and the inauguration in 1932 in Warsaw of the Radium Institute, of which her sister Brenesława became director. One of Marie Curie's outstanding achievements was to have understood the need to accumulate intense radioactive sources, not only to treat illness, but also to maintain an abundant supply for research in nuclear physics. The resultant stockpile was an unrivaled instrument until the appearance after 1930 of particle accelerators. The existence in Paris at the Radium Institute of a stock of 1.5 grams of radium in which, over a period of several years, radium D and polinium had accumulated made a decisive contribution to the success of the experiments undertaken in the years around 1930. This work prepared the way for the discovery of Neutron by Sir James Chadwick, and above all, for the discovery in 1934 by Irene and Frederick Joliot Curie of artificial radioactivity. A few months after this discovery, Marie Curie died July 4, 1934, as a result of leukemia caused by the action of radiation. Her contribution to the world of physics had been immense the importance of which had been demonstrated by the award to her of two Nobel Prizes and because of her influence on subsequent generations of nuclear physicists and chemists. Madame Curie, together with her daughter Irene Julio Curie, wrote the entry on radium for the 13th edition of the Encyclopedia Britannica in 1926. In 1995, Marie Curie's ashes were enshrined in the Pantheon in Paris. She was the first woman to receive this honor for her own achievements. Her office and laboratory in the Curie Pavilion of the Radium Institute are preserved as the Curie Museum. Wow, what a hardworking lady. <laughs> that wraps it up for today. I'm Miss History signing off. See ya.